Hi folks, if you're like me, you've probably seen a lot of people online talking about the new Optolong L-Extreme dual band filter for one-shot colour cameras. And like me, you probably thought, well, is it any good? Does it live up to the hype? Well, I decided to um, pull the trigger and buy one. So, is it any good? Well, let's go and find out. I'm Dr Ray, and welcome to AstroGadget. Folks, well, I, I'm not going to do an unboxing video, uh, you'll be glad to hear. Um, but I will say it comes in a very, very, very nice uh, box, nicely displayed. Um, I've got the uh, 1.25 inch version. Um, yeah, not more uh, you can say about it, it's just it's fairly uninspiring, it just looks like uh, another um, broadband filter. So I've attached it to um, my uh, ASI 533 uh, Pro one-shot colour camera, um, cooled, um, very nice uh, camera this, um, and uh, I've simply uh, attached it to the, uh, well using an adapter, uh, put it inside the um, M42 uh, ring collar and it sits there quite nicely so uh, ready to be attached to the Esprit 120 uh, triplet refractor um, and we'll see how it performs. Before we go and try out the filter let's take a minute to go over the specifications and think about the use for which it's intended. Okay so the first thing to notice is that it's a dual narrowband filter it has a 7 nanometer bandwidth centered around 656 nanometers which corresponds to the hydrogen alpha emission line and likewise it has a 7 nanometer bandwidth centered around 500 nanometers which corresponds to oxygen 3 uh, ionization emissions. Uh, the second thing to notice is that it blocks uh, wavelengths of light corresponding to mercury and sodium uh, and these are commonly uh, associated with light pollution caused by street lamps. So what it's doing is it's preferentially allowing light of particular wavelengths associated with emission objects uh, and at the same time blocking everything else that uh, it may uh, cause uh, pollution or interfere with uh, these wavelengths. So from looking at these specifications, uh, a couple of things emerge. And the first one is that if, like me, that your local uh, light pollution consists mainly of um, white light LED street lights, then the uh, mercury and the sodium blocking component of the filter is, is going to be pretty much ineffective in terms of reducing light pollution. And the second thing to note is that uh, the filter is essentially uh, it's a dual bandwidth uh, filter. Um, with a bandwidth um, allowing light uh, corresponding to hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 emissions uh, through, which means it's, it's designed uh, to be used with emission uh, objects or objects that have a strong emission component. It, it will not be useful uh, uh, if you're trying to image uh, re reflect reflectance objects um, or galaxies because the, the, the nature of the filter means that uh, a lot of the wavelengths of light from these objects will be actually effectively blocked. So as I say it's, de it's designed um, with uh, emission objects in, in mind um, or, or, or at least objects that have a strong emission component. Of them. So with that in mind let's go and try it out. Let's see how good or bad it is. Hi folks, well, after literally weeks of a grey canopy uh, over the sky, I um, managed to get a couple of clear nights, when I say clear, relatively clear before the clouds rolled in in a few hours. So I decided to um, 
uh, take some images of the uh, of the Crab Nebula um, Messier One using the Esprit 120 with the um, ASI um, 533 uh, and the, the Optolong L Extreme filter. But as a bit of a comparison, um, I also took some images uh, of that object without the filter to try and do a, as fair a comparison as I could. Well, it's obviously not going to be, you know, every variable is going to be locked down, but it's, 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 it's reasonably close. Um, the, I, I only managed to get about 25 frames um, uh, for the, the object uh, uh, using just a, a simple IR cut filter. Uh, but managed to get about 50 odd frames uh, using the L Extreme the second night. Um, other than that, same camera, same object. And um, what I would say is that uh, each night there was a sort of uh, three quarter full moon as well, so the conditions were not good. Um, which I guess is actually a reasonably uh, a reasonably good test of, of the thing. Um, likewise, there was a bit of high cloud as well on both nights. So, what did we find? Well, um, here's the here's the uh, image uh, without the L Extreme. It's uh, simply uh, with a, with an higher cut filter. And you know it's, it's, it's not bad. And, and what I would say is, in all of the images I'm about to show you, there's absolutely minimal um, uh, processing involved. This is a bit of a stretch and color correction and DB. But other than that, you know, I haven't really spent any huge amount of time processing. So you're seeing things reasonably uh, as they are from the camera. Um, so. Basically, a light frame here of MSA1. Um, there's a lot of background noise, um, principally because uh, lack of frames I've taken, uh, and secondly, as I say, it was quite um, light polluted with, with the moon. So I uh, used a dynamic back, um, background extraction to, to, to clear that, and it's worked reasonably well. But as you can see, it's a bit noisy, and and then in, in this frame, you can you can see there's some details starting to show that there's this sort of filaments, red filaments showing some uh, detail there. Um, so you know, I'm been reasonably pleased with this image uh, as a broadband image. Um, yeah, given the conditions, the stars are a little bit bloated, as you'd expect. Uh, again, for for this kind of image. So what did it look like where the second night when you used the same camera and the same object, similar conditions, a uh, bit of a moon, a bit of high cloud, although uh, in fairness I did manage to get uh, probably twice as many frames, if not almost three times as many frames. Uh, but nevertheless, let, let's see how it compared. Now I think um, that's chalk and cheese really, isn't it? Um, not only has it reduced the um, the uh, background light pollution from the moon. Um, well, it's, it's, it's kept the stars nice and tight. Uh, uh, as you can see, that really quite impressive is, as it, it has uh, brought out considerable more detail uh, in the object than is, was um, seemed to be possible with with, with the, the pure broadband image. So yeah, I'm. Um, I dare say I'm I'm so far I'm I'm very impressed with this. I think that the results um speak for themselves really. Um like I say taken in broadly similar conditions with the same camera, same telescope, um like I say a bit of a difference in terms of the frames, number of frames taken, but uh, and again minimal processing. I'm not too bothered about at this stage about producing a, a, a really pretty picture. I just want to see what the you know, what difference the filter confers upon the image uh, at the most base level. And and as, as you can see, it, it seems to work wonderfully. So, um, and just as a comparison, uh, again, maybe this isn't a particularly great comparison. This is an image, a true narrowband image I took a couple of years ago using uh, an SCT um, and uh, using Hydrogen Alpha, um, Opsin 3 and S2 filters, so it's a true true narrowband uh, using a, a, a monochrome camera, it was the Attic 
460EX with badder uh, narrowband filters. Um, focus isn't really brilliant and again I haven't bothered to um, I'm going to say uh, process this to any high degree, but I, I you know, I appreciate it. it's different instrument, different camera, you know, but it is a narrow band image, a true narrow band image. Um, and yes, you've got a lot more control over the colors uh, uh, and so on and so forth in terms of exposures um, for the different channels and combination. I can see we've got them roughly orientated, although there's obviously differences because of the different kit was used at the time. But you know what? I don't think that's too bad. I don't, you know, I to me this is this filter, the the Optolong seems to be a, a kind of good compromise between a broadband and um, and a narrow band image. Uh, um, what do you think? I mean, one of the, the things that strike me is that, is that this image here that I, t I took recently was. The one-shot color camera and and the the L Extreme. It, it, the time it took me to to acquire this data was probably a half to a third of the time it was required to produce this. And like I say, yeah, yeah, it looks it looks it looks a pretty damn good compromise to me. Well, again, I'd be interested to know what you think. You know terms of the time and you know uh, you know at the end of the day it's it's about the image isn't it okay so before we go any further i just want to make it absolutely clear that i'm not affiliated financially or otherwise to Optolong or any other um, product that i may mention in this or any other video that uh, I, I may post so having said that what do I think of the filter? Well, I have to say after its initial use uh, with this session, I am pretty impressed with it. Look, it, it will not compete with uh, a monochrome camera uh, and dedicated narrowband filters for hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3 and then sulfur 2. Uh, that kind of setup allows you a greater degree of flexibility in terms of exposure times for the different channels. And again, with the mono camera, you're likely to get a lot more sensitivity uh, as well, uh, particularly when you're using uh, narrowband filters. Some people maintain that uh, uh, the a color chip uh, from a, a one-shot color camera um, will only be using one quarter of the, the sensor than you would get from uh, a monochrome chip and there, therefore the, the sensitivity is, is, will be so much more reduced. Now I can see the logic in that but uh, I have to say I'm not too convinced by that argument uh, at all. I'm not quite sure that's quite accurate. And I'm going to explain why in the next video when we do some more um, tests on this particular um, filter. So am I impressed? Yes. I have to say yes, so far on the um, limited uh, imaging I've done with this filter, I am impressed and yes it does seem to, uh, it does seem to live up to the, to the hype surrounding it. Um, I'm going to try this out uh, on another object, uh, again just to see what kind of uh, results we can get uh, and uh, I'll, I'll share the results with you again uh, in the next video. Uh, meantime, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and remember, keep watching the skies. Watch the skies, everywhere, keep looking. Keep watching the sky.